Hello beautiful community. A lot of people find it hard to fall asleep at night and what do you do when you're lying awake unable to go back to sleep? Well this is my story on insomnia. Insomnia under the quiet spell of the moon and stars feels like a secret world revealing itself while the rest of the world slumbers. I'm wide awake, thoughts swirling, restless energy building it's in this stillness that the urge to do something takes over. Anything to break the silence of sleeplessness. Most nights I will make a cup of hot chocolate. I embrace Sudoku, its patterns and puzzles offering distraction. But then I imagine something more tactile, more profound. Night wood turning. In the darkness of the shed, the moon and stars become my only light source, casting a cool silver glow across the room. The lathe hums softly as I work, guided by the faintest glimmer on the wood surface. The shadows and the soft light transforms the piece of wood, forcing me to rely on the instinct and touch rather than clear vision. The usual fluorescent glare is replaced by the soft shimmer of starlight filtering through the window, and it changes everything. I become attuned to the natural rhythm of the spinning wood feeling every curve, every imperfection. The world outside feels far away and in this moonlit solitude I find a deeper connection to night turning. Night turning is rapidly becoming the next big craze sweeping through the woodworking community. What began as a niche practice for a few adventurous artisans has now captured the imaginations of woodworkers everywhere. The concept is simple yet transformative. Wood turning in the dark, illuminated only by moonlight stars or the soft glow of a light. At its core, night turning offers a complete different experience from the daytime craft. Without the usual bright lights of a workshop, woodworkers are forced to rely on their senses in new ways. Feeling the grain of the wood, listening to the subtle sounds of the lathe, and trusting their intuition to guide the tools. The shadows and soft lighting create a calming atmosphere, turning the process into an almost spiritual experience. More than just a technical challenge, night turning has captured the imagination because it offers something unique, a deeper connection to the craft. It's not just about creating beautiful objects, it's about embracing the calm and solitude of the night, finding inspiration in the darkness and letting creative flow in a way that daylight rarely allows. Night turning is more than a passing trend. It's becoming a movement that redefines how woodworkers engage with their craft, blending artistry, nature and innovation in an unexpected and thrilling way. So one of the issues I have when I'm turning at night is selecting a tool or grabbing a tool from the rack and I seem to cut myself because I'm not sure where they are they're different heights and I seem to have cut myself I've cut myself pretty bad a couple of occasions and so I've come up with an ingenious plan to try and solve that issue so I've worked out a solution to cutting my hands all the time and that is I've put some plates here with braille on it so I can actually use my better finger and work out which is the tool that I need at the time so the last couple of nights that saved certainly saved my fingers so I've hit got here the skew and that's that's skew in braille and then I've got roughing a parting tool and I've only used one for the bowl so I've got a bowl uh, tool there. So I think that's certainly helped save my fingers and I think it's a great plan going forward and I'll start to label the other tools that I've got so that, that I'll be able to use a few more tools rather than the, the four of these ones which are probably my most popular tools that I use. I have just released my latest book titled Night Turning. In this captivating and richly detailed guide, I jump into the unusual yet deeply rewarding world of wood turning under the cover of darkness. 
far from a conventional how-to manual, the book invites readers into an almost mystical journey where the night itself becomes a companion in the creative process. The heart of the book lies in its exploration of the century shift that occurs when sight is limited and the moon and stars provide the only illumination. I describe how woodworkers can develop a heightened awareness of touch, sound and intuition, discovering new depths in their craft. I share my personal experiences of turning in near darkness, recounting the serenity and focus that comes when the distractions of daylight disappear. The book offers step-by-step -step instructions on how to safely and effectively turn wood at night, from setting up a minimally lit workspace to selecting woods that respond best to low-light conditions. I have also included stories from fellow night turners who have found creative liberation in this unconventional approach. Out now, where good books are sold. So last night was the first night that I tried a bowl. I thought I'd give that a go. I've been doing spindle work for quite a while, but not a bowl. And of course, my first bowl, I went right through the bottom. You can see that, right through the bottom. It's a lovely piece of maple. I got it from John and Lynn's place last year. And it's nice and soft, beautiful wood. So I'll have to work out a system to be able to turn a bowl. That wasn't very successful. I was doing okay, and then I either got a bit tired or did something wrong. And I also lost a couple of spindles again last night. I seem, they seem to come off every now and again if I go too deep or do something wrong. Well, there, there's one. So I've been doing some honey dippers and it's taken a little while, but I've been able to work out how to do the grooves evenly by feel. So I've got that and oh, that's what happened, it broke. So I was wondering where it went to. So it must have just broke off. Oh, here's another one. What? Oh, that came off too. So that was a gum nut. I was doing a gum nut. Uh, it's spl it split. Hmm. See, and that's the trouble when you do it in the dark. You don't know if there's any splits in the wood, uh, unless you feel the big splits. Oh, there's a big split there. But you got to feel them. Then you got to try and glue them up. And obviously, I missed that split. I didn't see that one. Yeah, so that come off. It certainly come off with a bang. I'm glad I found that. I don't think there's any others here that I dropped. No, I don't think so. You know, I seem to they, they seem to come off every now and again. And they certainly when they hit the wall, they hit the wall for bang. <laughs> it scares the hell out of me. You know, so that was last night's turning. A bit disappointed about the bowl. It was coming out quite nicely. Anyway, I'll try again tonight, see how I go. So another issue that I've had to resolve is sharpening the tools. And I've got to walk over to the other side of the shed. And I've got a rope tied here that I use, and that sort of guides me along. Gets me past a few of the obstacles and gets me here to the grinding wheels. And luckily I've got the window here and that helps if there's a bit of moonlight there. I'm able to sharpen the tools and I'm able to feel around here until I get to the stop and go. The stop's a bit further out than the go. And once I start grinding, the sparks seem to illuminate the tool and I'm able to sharpen it. And then it's just an easy walk back. Again, I use the rope just so I don't hit anything and get back to the lathe. So I think I'll solve that little issue of sharpening the tools. So I had a little bit of an accident last night and I've come up with a solution but when it's dark I get too close to the lathe and things get caught so what I've done is I reckon I put a block of wood right there so that when I hit the block of wood I can't go any closer to the lathe I reckon that might work be better than the alternative anyway <laughs> 